Hello fashion sewers. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to sew a bent. I'm Colleen Geely and this is Fashion Sewing Blog TV. I have a sewing pattern here that has a bent on it and as you can see here this extension part of the actual garment is what is called the vent. Now that allows for the ease and movement within a garment. In this particular case it's the centre back of the skirt. I've got a jacket here with a vent in it and it can also be referred to as a slit. Now this is what it looks like when you open it out and one side of it is self-facing, the other side isn't. Um, I'm not going to show you it lined and um, what vents are used for is to give ease of movement within a garment and you'll find them on coats and jackets and skirts. The example I'm going to be showing you, you here is um, sewing patterning of a skirt. So what you would do is um, you start your sewing your seam from about this point here because you're going to have to leave that allowance for your zip and you sew to that point there. Now, this is the extension part that I'm going to be showing you on this little sample here. I'll just move that out of the way. So what I've done here is I've overlocked my garment, neatened the edge. I've used an overlocker. Some of you may refer to it as a serge, uh, a serger or serge. And what you need to make sure you do before you sew anything to do with the seam of the actual garment is to turn the edges of the vent itself before you start sewing the seam and I've done that on both of those sides okay so I've overlocked and then I've stitched them down and now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and tell you how I'm going to sew it okay I'm going to start sewing from this point here this is the back seam I'm going to be using uh, 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch whichever one you prefer and I'm going to come all the way down to this red dot here now that's representing a tailor tack and then from that point there I'm going to be using a larger stitch to continue sewing towards the hem and I'll tell the reason why in a moment so let's just take that over to Sheen remember using your regular stitch length I'm going to be using my just a bit longer stitch length that I would normally use pins out as you go. I stop at my red dot. I'll just do a back stitch there. Come back. Right, that point there is where you stop and then you increase your stitch and you can also increase your tension if you wish. You can do a short line as you can see mine there. And when you get to the end do not back stitch that's important. Okay, don't back stitch. Pull your work out and then cut your threads. Now I'm going to start sewing again from this point here, the red dot, to the end here. Needle down, sit forward, back stitch. Okay, remember you've got your same seam allowance to the end. Now I'm going to back stitch here. I want to secure the stitching at this point. Okay, and I've done that. I'm cut my threads away. And then I'm going to take that to my work surface and show you what to do next. Okay, this is the back seam, and I've used a regular stitch length to that point of the red dot, and then, then I crease my uh, stitch length towards the hem. And then um, I reset my machine to a regular stitch, and then I started from that point and brought it to this point, and then back stitch to the secure the stitching. Now the next step you need to do because remember we need this uh, seam here to be open so in order for us to have a nicely open seam we don't want this to happen in order to have that seam open so we need to just snip into the seam allowance to the red dot and do not cut into the stitching and then we get a nicely opened seam which we then press. I've now um, pressed my seam open so that's what you want 
and I've also continued pressing along this row of stitching here. The reason is that you want a nice crisp finish once you've actually um, taken this stitching out. You get a nice smooth straight line. Now we've got one more row of stitching to do so we need to make sure that the vent here stops moving around so you don't want that to happen so we're going to have to do a row of stitching on the right side of the garment to stop that from moving around. So if I just turn it around that way and show you is that we're now going to be doing a row of stitching that comes from that point there to this point here. My work is now at my machine and I have to put it slightly at an angle because that's where the shaping of the actual vent is and you can actually feel it as you actually sew along. So do bear that in mind or you can chalk it if you wish. So remember I'm now working on the right side of the garment. My needle is now going to go into the seam itself, seam line. And then I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to be using a slightly um, longer stitch length, but you can stay with your regular stitch length or you can go that um, larger, it's up to you. And I'm just going to keep it straight at an angle. This pin is going to be my indicator for when the actual vent ends on the wrong side. Now I'm not going to back stitch because I want a kind of nice neat finish so that is where I'm actually going to finish my sewing and I'm going to show you how to tie off your thread onto the right side of the garment so you get this nice neat professional looking stitch into the right side of your sewing project. So there we are. So I'm going to turn my work over and then I'm going to get my thread and I'm going to pull and create a loop you can see that there and pull it through so now if I just quickly flip that over you can see it's gone through to the wrong side of the garment and then just do a couple of knots to keep it in place oh more fingers and thumbs here aren't I? <laughs> there we go and then I'll just use my stitch from pit just to cut those off and then you do the same with that one as well you can see how that looks really nice now um, I'd actually recommend you do it that way but if you want to back tack you know just do like one and you should be okay with that and there we have it a completed vent on some of you may refer to it as a slit so we've got the top stitching on the right side of the garment there and then I've taken out the temporary stitching there which allows for this nice, crisp, neat line of pressing here. And as I open it, you've got the self-facing of the top layer of the extension. And then you've got the other section there. And as you can see, the, um, the raw edges have been turned under. So that is how you sew a vent. I hope you found that technique useful. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me and I'll see you next time.